Hi first graders. We're going to reread Arbor Day Square today. We read this about a month ago, right before we got out of school. So it's been a while. So we're going to reread this story today. And then in your journals, you're going to write about the setting. So as you're listening to the story and looking at the pictures on the video, be thinking about what the setting looks like, words you could use to describe it. And remember, a setting is where the story takes place. So the story is Arbor Day Square, written by Catherine O. Galbraith and illustrated by Sid Moore. Here's the title page. I see a little girl in a wheelbarrow. Hmm. Katie takes a deep breath. Everything smells new, she tells Papa, and everything does. Their prairie town is growing week by week. Now they have stores with glass windows, a church with a steeple, and a schoolhouse with desks for all 17 students to sit in long rows. Ooh, there was a lot of description on that page about the prairie town. I see the dirt roads. I see all the stores that look a little bit old fashioned. I see somebody driving a horse drawn buggy instead of a car. I notice the way the people are dressed. The men have overalls and hats. The women have aprons. These are all details you could include in your writing and drawing. Every week, the train brings more people who are eager for land. The train also brings more lumber and logs for houses, stables, fences, and barns. Papa helps pace out the town square. It will be a gathering place for concerts and socials and speeches. Like the squares back east, the ones back home, the ones they remember as children. Only one thing is missing. Katie and the children know it. The townsfolk and farmers know it too. There are no trees on the prairie. Ooh, that's an important detail. When you draw your setting, I wouldn't put any trees in because there's not any trees in this part. Um, it's something you could also write about. When they arrived, there were no trees on the prairie. No trees for climbing or for shade. No trees for fruit or warm winter fires. No trees for birds or for beauty. At the town meeting, Everyone agrees that a proper town, their town, needs trees. Mrs. Johansson passes a basket. Precious nickels, dimes, and quarters tumble in. Jingle, jingle, clink. Katie adds her own six pennies and Papa's silver dollar. When the basket is heavy, Mr. Klein taps out an order over the telegraph lines. Send 15 trees. So we had talked about before school got out, that a telegraph is a way people used to communicate before there were phones and computers and cell phones. Days tick by. Sunny days, rainy days, windy days when dust devils dance in the road. At last, the telegraph lines tap back. Trees are coming. Doo! When the train pulls in, folks hurry to the depot. Babies and dogs come too. Katie skips behind beside Papa, swinging her bucket and dolly. They're here! Papa, Mr. Zimmerman, and all the O'Briens carefully unload the boxcar, counting as they go. 13, 14, 15. Katie stares at the saplings, spindly and green. They're too little. Don't worry, they'll grow, promises Papa, but Katie isn't sure. Katie and Papa follow the parade of trees to the Newtown Square. Papa and Mr. Carter dig three holes. Dig, swoop, scoop. Dig, swing, scoop. Papa plants three small maples. Let me help, Katie says. She gently pats the soil down around each baby tree. Uh, 
Under the warm sun, more trees spring up. Some days these oaks will shade the bench, Papa says, and there the elm tree will shelter the bandstand. But Katie wasn't sure. Neighbors plant four maples near the church, one apple tree on the corner, and three chestnuts in the dusty schoolyard. Danny O'Brien leads the bucket brigade. Katie lugs her buckets too. Cold drinks for thirsty trees and dogs. So there's what the church looks like. That could be part of your writing and your drawing and your journal. In a quiet corner of the square, Papa and Katie dig a hole together. Here they plant a flowering dogwood in memory of Mama. Katie touches the tender leaves. It is very little, but... Now this is our special tree, she whispers. Papa hugs her. Yes, our very special tree. Yet as the sun begins to set, the square bristles and blooms with green. Papa and Katie spread their blanket next to Mama's tree. Katie peeks into the basket. There's plenty of food to share with friends and dogs and Dolly. As old Doc fiddles up the moon, neighbors gather their children and dogs and wave goodnight. Let's do this again next year. And they do. Year after year, they gather in the square for another Arbor Day, a tree planting day, a holiday. Carrying shovels, rakes, and hoes, Katie and Papa help plant trees throughout the town. Trees for climbing and for shade. Trees for fruit and warm winter fires. Tree for birds and for beauty. And every year, Papa laughs and tells Katie, don't worry, honey, they'll grow. And every year, they do. It's another Arbor Day. Neighbors, kids, and dogs hurry to the square. Here come Katie and Danny O'Brien with their Megan Ann. Katie's papa, now a grandpa, holds one of Megan's hands. In the square lies a small row of saplings, spindly and green. Katie smiles. One day that willow will sweep the pond, she says, and there the cedar will sweep the sky. Megan shakes her head and Katie laughs. Don't worry, honey, they'll grow. Now let's find your grandma tree. Megan runs across the square. Her fa family follows just behind. There, Katie spreads out their blanket under the blooming dogwood tree. Ra robins rustle in the leaves. Sparrows chirp and flutter. Megan peeks into the basket. There's plenty of food to share with friends and dogs and bear. When the moon rises, silver and round, neighbors gather up children and grandchildren and whistle for the dogs. See you ag here again next year, they call, and they do. Celebrating families, trees, and neighbors year after year and year after that. Okay, so in your writing, I want you to use this vocabulary word, prairie. Our story took place on the prairie. And so when we think about what we're going to write, we used a setting web in your last packet. You could use a setting web to help get your thoughts ready for your writing. So I have the word prairie in the middle and then the, it's called a web because it spiders off with words that describe the prairie. So I wrote tall grass, whoopsies, tall grass, dirt road, no trees, and schoolhouse. So I might write something like this. The story took place on a prairie a prairie has tall grass, no trees, a dirt road, schoolhouse. You could even write about the church, the church and the stores. And then you might add something about how they planted trees since there weren't trees to begin with. So in your writing, I want you to make sure you write in a complete sentence. So you need to make sure you start with a capital letter and don't mix any capitals in anywhere they shouldn't be. You need to make sure you have spaces between your words. Uh, please have a period at the end of your sentence. That's something we forget a lot. And read it back to yourself and make sure it makes sense. 
Make sure you didn't forget any words that you need to make that sentence make sense to the person who reads it. So again, you're writing about the setting in the story Arbor Day, and I want you to use the word prairie in your sentence and then tell me what a prairie is. Tell me what that prairie looked like in the story. The good thing about having this on video is if you forget, you can go back and listen to some of the story again. I can't wait to see your writing. I'm gonna have your parents turn it into me so I can see how hard you've been working. All right, thanks first graders, bye.